It's been 10 years since we won the war and closed the bridge. And the world is still picking up the pieces. It was interesting to see where Pacific Rim could go after the first film. And action! We decided that it was going to be 10 years after. And since all the Jaegers were destroyed in the first movie, we had a chance to rebuild the Jaeger program from the ground up. PPDC, they have like a board meeting and said, we need upgrades, we need new pilots, we need them younger. The advances that we have, the new Jaegers, the new characters are warranted and only warranted by the first movie. There is a seamless connection between the two. This is our time. This is our chance to make a difference. I really wanted to preserve the spirit of the first movie, that you have humanity coming together to fight a common enemy. That's one of the things that really appealed to me when approached with the thought of a sequel. It really is a coming together of the world and putting differences aside, which is something I think Guillermo did in the first movie as well. I love the fact that it is inherently an international cast. We really wanted to honor that spirit. When I first read the script, I thought it was very accurate and paid homage to the old, but continued with a new story. In the first movie, the PBDC started off very popular. And then it kind of fell out of favor. The politicians wanted to instead build a wall. For me, after the Jaegers proved that they were the best last defense, people would understand, well, they just saved the planet. Maybe we ought to invest in the Jaegers instead of the wall. We really wanted to just push the idea of Jaegers forward. Humanity's had 10 years to redesign the Jaegers and prepare for another attack, if it comes. In the first movie, you saw the early generation and some mid-generation, and these are the advanced generation of Jaegers. The precursors, which are the aliens in the other dimension, they've also had 10 years to think about their mistakes and what happened. Precursors. So they have upgraded their kaiju as well. Chow Industries is an advanced tech firm that is pushing a new drone Jaeger technology. This means that a single pilot cannot build a drone via remote link from anywhere in the world. This will make the world safer because you don't have to worry about pilots being drift compatible anymore. You don't have to worry about their brains being overloaded in battle. And you don't have to worry about the time it takes to deploy them because the idea is to have drones everywhere around the Pacific Rim. And action! Initiate a neural handshake. I definitely wanted to keep the idea of drifting, which I thought was a fantastic concept from the first movie. You have to mind meld with another person, and not everybody is drift compatible. You've got to be simpatico. Neural handshake, strong and steady. We wanted to keep that alive in this movie and push that mythology further. Stand. 10 years since the war has ended. There's a training program. He's in charge of instructing the cadets and setting the course so he can groom young pilots. When I first joined the Corps, I was just like you. The minute you enter this program, you join a family. He's trying to train these young kids to one day take over. As you were. As you get older, you start putting up walls, and it's harder to bond with other people. But when you're young, you make friends faster, it's easier, and the idea is that you will have more pilots that connect with each other instead of just these two are simpatico. Three, two, one, so The fantastic thing about the first movie is that it gave us a fantastic foundation to build upon and gave us an opportunity to expand the ideas that Del Toro had and to use it as a base point to create new stories, new characters, new sequences. We wouldn't be able to do that without the first movie. I just wanted to try to honor what Guillermo did in the first movie and push the franchise and the mythology forward. And cut.